Can you hear me? Okay, so so DNA sequencing actually uh, sequencing means reading. Actually, you know we know that we all all the living organisms have DNA inside them, right? All the trees, plants, animals, and so on, including us. So if you want to read the DNA, uh, you know in whatever order the you know, the alphabets are like ACGT in certain orders are there, right? And you want to read it. So, uh, how do we do that actually? So, in the early days, actually, something around 1950s. So, I think this is, uh, uh, I would say, 45 years ago. Okay. So, I think that era was really very important. So many great discoveries happened at that time. Uh, so, we know that. So, I have kept the title as DNA sequencing a new microscope. The reason is that, you know, that microscope was discovered around 400 years ago, and it has changed the way we, we see many things, you know, um, uh, around us. In a similar manner, this DNA sequencing, I, I would say, is kind of new microscope where we can see any living organism and we can look at its uh, sequence, you know. So we can look at what kind of DNA is there and so on, right? So reading is very, very important. The person who did it first, he started reading protein sequence. It's a very interesting thing if you look at the history, uh, how he determined that the certain order of amino acid sequences uh, are there in a protein. And initially his, his thought was it's totally random, you know, some, AC, some uh, 20 amino acids are in some random combination which is there, uh, uh, you know, when you look at the protein thing. And uh, in fact, he got a Nobel Prize twice. Okay, so first he did uh, uh, protein sequencing, then uh, he also looked at DNA sequencing, right? So it's a very famous method known as Sanger method uh, of uh, reading, okay? So initially, uh, when you want to read portion, portion of DNA, the different kind of approaches uh, were there. Initially, people used some sort of enzymes and uh, basically it's kind of chemical, uh, you know, uh, reading. So we call it chemical sequencing, you know, some sort of uh, chemistry using some properties of chemistry. They try to read the order of uh, sequence of ACGT, right? That was the early days. So let me show you. I will give you a brief uh, overview. It will not be too long, I guess, but. So, so we are right now we are focusing on sequencing. So I have kept uh, most of the lecture on, around this paper. This is a very nice, beautiful paper. You can look at this appeared in 2017 in Nature. So DNA sequencing at 40, past, present, and future. You know, again you can see the jaw church. You know, everywhere they are there, right? So from Harvard. So. <clears throat> Okay, so I think you can look at uh, this paper in details if you want to know what happened in DNA sequencing in the last 40 years. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to talk about too much technical details in terms of chemistry at the moment, uh, but I'll give you a kind of bird eye view. So the early sequencing, uh, you know, Sanger, which he developed in the 1950s or so, you see, he was looking at insulin protein, you know, and uh, that was determined, the first one that he tried to read. Later on, RNA sequencing, uh, up to 76 nucleotides were uh, done in 1960, you know, using Sanger's method. And uh, now let me show you. This is a timeline of sequencing. Now, if you look at, so 1953 sequencing of insulin protein by Sanger. The sequence of LNT RNA, transfer RNA molecule, 65, 68. It was very tedious, you know. Sequencing of cohesive ends of phase lambda virus, you know. So phase lambda virus which infects bacteria, you know. So only a portion of only 12 bases they were able to read, you see. 12 bases uh, in 1968, you know. Uh, this is a really uh, very early days. Then. There is, a, there is a technique which is known as chemical cleavage procedure. 
uh, discovered by Maxim and Gilbert. So this is known as Maxim Gilbert sequencing. It's a very uh, important uh, discovery. So this is also known as chemical sequencing. You know, using chemistry, the properties of chemistry, you would like to sequence or read. So they were able to read 24 bases, one base per month, one ACGT per month. So it took them about two years to read 24 bases. This is something uh, in 1977, so slow, right? All this chemistry, do you do what is there, A, C, G, and T. And now if you look at the current technology, uh, you can do, you know, whole human genome in a couple of hours, you know. So that kind of, uh, uh, you know, difference, which is about 3 billion base pairs, you know, you can read so fast. You see the, how technology evolves. It's a very, very important thing. Um, then Sanger sequencing uh, uh, become a popular method, uh, uh, you know, mm, uh, using chain terminator procedure, you know. This is another uh, detail. So I'm not going into the details of any of these, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, there are because we have to cover then a lot of other stuffs, you know, uh, stuff. But anyway, uh, main thing that uh, that was discovered, uh, you know, M13 phase vector, uh, you know, uh, was again uh, using shotgun sequencing. Shotgun sequencing is something, you know, uh, if I ask you to read a book, and I say that the best procedure to read the book is that just tear the pages, make a lot of copies, okay and use clever graph algorithms to reconstruct all pages in certain orders and you read the book. This is the way of shotgun sequencing, you know. You divide into different fragments, you know, the whole DNA, divide into different pieces, amplify that using PCR, polymerase chain reaction kind of thing, right. And after amplification, you use graph theoretic algorithms to because these, these segments will may overlap at some places. You reconstruct the whole sequence using algorithm. So there is a, there's a nice uh, book also which is there. So this is a very popular uh, shotgun sequencing. Uh, major discovery happened in 1987, you know, 86, 87 actually, you know. Uh, fluorescent detection in electro uh, photic sequencing. This technique uh, was by, I think, uh, Hood, yeah, Hood, and uh, he was. The, they were at apply and and applied bio systems. These people actually discovered, so which is, uh, you know, it's kind of a automated sequencing, you know, and they were able to read thousand bases per day. So it's a significant improvement, you know, uh, uh, in this technique. Thousand bases per day means many people started, uh, you know, putting money and then uh, because the automated sequencing technique because they used to first time this fluorescent detection thing, which is, was a nice thing, you know. Uh, so basically, you know, in all the sequencing mechanism, if there is A, C, G, or T, you have to convert into some sort of signal, okay? It could be electrical signal, it could be, you know, uh, you know, uh, based on the mass of the ACGT, it will, so which is used in mass spectroscopy, or it could be, you know, some sort of signal, or, or some electrochemical signal, or some light signal, or something, you know. So each ACGT pair, so if you convert it into this kind of signal and read that signal, and then use computers to actually compile everything together and get the file. Uh, you know, that is a basic thing. So this has, uh, this discovery in 87 has uh, really, uh, you know, they started. So basically after that NCBI, uh, National Center for Biological, uh, so NCBI, uh, uh, you know, uh, Institute at, uh, you know, in US, they started collecting sequences, you know, of different things. People started reading the data basically, right? So it's, uh, so basically a reading race is started, you know, you read something and then because thousand bases per day, but still it was a very costly affair at that point of time actually, you know. So in fact, it is until uh, 90s, yeah, 80, 87, 88, uh, when uh, people also started saying that maybe we should look at human genome. But you see, still the speed was very slow, you know, so uh, reading human genome. So as I mentioned in 1989, uh, you know, when Eric Lander uh, proposed the, uh, to NIH that we should read human genome, people say that, are you, are you mad? Basically because it is too tedious job, reading three billion base pairs, it's a huge 
tasks, you know, maybe. And I think that because the technology was not developed so far, you know. But then, because of the Human Genome Project, a lot of different techniques, people started thinking more and more about sequencing methods. How do we actually, uh, you know, find new ways of detecting ACGT in a given ACGT sequence of data, right? So different ways of doing it. Uh, even robot robotics played an important role. You know, automated robots. You know uh, how they started looking into the different signals and collecting the data into the computer and so on. So a lot of interesting things happened in eighty eight, nineties, ninety two. In fact, nineteen ninety six was also another uh, important uh, method. Uh, you know, pyro sequencing. Then uh, uh, you know uh, this basically. Uh, a major thing that has come is in the form of parallel, uh, you know, reading of data, you know, and the parallel reading of data has actually uh, accelerated the whole uh, discovery, you know, so how do we read parallel? So they discovered what is known as microarray, uh, you know, so micro is, you can see that there is this kind of a square with a lot of spots on it, each spot, so suppose, I mean, and each spot has uh, ACGT of certain length. That that order you know what ACGT. So, for example, uh, you know, if I say that I want to read uh, a length 4 ACGT sequence, right? Length 4. So, at length 4, how many ACGT sequences are possible? 4 raised to power 4, right? 4 choices for each, right? So, now you basically make a square and put these things all possible possibility of strands of ACGT at each spot, right? And then what you do, so this is known sequence, right? This is known as microarray. And you dip in a amplified, so the, the DNA that you want to read, you use shotgun sequencing to cut into pieces, amplify it with PCR, and in that solution, you dip this microarray device. So this microarray, what it will do? So wherever there is a known sequence, you know, maybe the first spot will be all A, 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 right? Second spot will be, you know, A, 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 T. Third spot could be A, A, T, T, or whatever, all possibilities, right? Uh, four is to power four possibilities in each spot, right? So now this, uh, whatever is attached on the microarray is known to you, right? And now this is attaching to an unknown sequence. So you know that the unknown sequence, when it attached to the known sequence, it will hybridize, right? In terms of complementary thing. So whatever it is you are reading, will automatically attach to the known sequence. So wherever there is a known sequence, there, wherever there is a hybridization, actually, you know, and you know, you convert that hybridization into some form of signal to read it uh, by the computer, you know. Okay, so there is a, a hybridization of A and T, hybridization of C and G, what kind of thing. So basically because this order you know, on one side you know, other unknown order you know what is there, because it's just complementary of the known thing. That was the key technique that was used in the Human Genome Project, and that has revolutionized the whole Human Genome Project. You know, people started, uh, you know, making a lot of new discoveries after that. Uh, still, uh, so basically, I would say that one approach of which was used in Human Genome was sequencing by, uh, uh, so basically synthesis. You know, you are synthesizing the uh, ACGT by hybridization. This technique uh, is also limited. Until recently, uh, there are companies like you know, Oxford Nanopore Sequencing Company, uh, which is uh, which has created a pen drive type of sequencing uh, technology where you read each signal A C. So each A C G T each each uh, bit one by one. You know, so it passes through a nanopore, and uh, some sort of uh, signal is uh, you know generated. So if A is there, a different kind of signal will be generated. C is there, a different kind of signal will be generated, and all those things are collected. Uh, by the computer, right? So you that is very fast. So you just pass ACGT through nanopore sequencing, and you can read automatically. You don't have to do any all chemical things or hybridization thing. So this is really you know uh, easy. Now, by the way, this uh, sequencing uh, nanopore sequencing is so common that uh, of course uh, you know if you use, so suppose you use uh, um, uh, you re read one bacteria through nanopore sequencing or some other thing. It, it, it will last for a couple of hours, maybe one, 120 hours or so, but then you have to discard it. But what I'm saying that it's very fast. 
So fast reading is very, very important thing. And I think in future, future is really, very really bright. So basically, when you are moving around or any species is moving around in the forest or so on, they release what is known as eDNA. eDNA, E doesn't stand for electronic DNA. E stands for environmental DNA. So those signatures you leave around, and actually these kind of sequencers, in, in future people are thinking these, these kind of sequencer combined with sensors, you know, they can detect what kind of DNA was there in the environment, right? And that will be really very, very noble thing to basically, noble sense, sensing technique will be there. So you can determine what kind of a species was there, there at a certain point of time, right? So it's a it's very, uh, you know, beautiful thing uh, in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, reading environmental DNA. Anyway, so let me uh, go into some more details uh, about these sequencing methods. Now, there are, uh, you know, uh, if you see, there are a couple of milestones which you probably should remember now, uh, even if you are a computer science student. Like, for example, 1977 bacteriophage uh, virus was studied, right? Uh, 5x174, then 1982 bacteriophage lambda, which infects bacteria, then influenza virus 1995, okay? Uh, then uh, yeast. Uh, C. ligand is a very, very important one, which was uh, sequenced in 1998. C. ligand is a, uh, it's a beautiful model organism that biologists study, you know. Uh, so if you really want to understand biology, you look at C. ligands, you know, the beautiful properties of this biologically. Uh, in 2000, Drosophila, uh, and then 2001, Homo sapiens. So actually the Homo sapiens, you know, the humans project, uh, they gave a deadline of 2003, but actually they completed in 2001. Okay, so this is something uh, important. After that, you can see that, I mean, all kind of things were done till 2017. This paper which, from which I have taken this is up till 2017 only. And, you know, people are still buying these machines, collecting the data and reading it and publishing the paper, right? So it's so easy thing. Buy the machine, collect the data, I think, and do all kind of things. There were comp certain computational milestones. Smith Potterman algorithm is a very famous algorithm, okay, uh, in 1981. And uh, as I mentioned, Gene Mank was created in 1982, uh, which started depositing all kind of uh, genomic data. And uh, if you, I think I have shown you NCBI website uh, sometime back in the lectures, if you remember. Uh, you know, how different kind of genomes are listed there. BLAST is a powerful technique, actually, uh, which was discovered in 1990 uh, to match, basically. So, you know, whenever there is a new virus, like, you know, uh, your COVID-19, right, you require sequencer. It's very, very important, right? Because sequencer will read what kind of genome is. And actually, most of the RNA viruses, as you know, they keep on changing. So some RNA virus which infects you today and, uh, you know, after fighting with your immune system, it will evolve. So the sequence will change. So if you infect some other patient, uh, the viral uh, the uh, viral copy of uh, that uh, virus will be different in that, uh, uh, you know, uh, individual. So you need to again sequence. So sequencing is very, very important technique, actually. Whenever you want to identify what kind of virus it is, right, and so on. Then gene scan is a popular uh, software for finding genes, you know. Genes are instructions for making protein, uh, you know. So I think these are all interesting things. In 2002, they have, they have got Ensemble, again, a database. Uh, so I think you can see that there are a lot of uh, protein. After the DNA, people started also sequencing protein. So protein, DNA, RNA, databases are created, right? So that's how bioinformatics uh, started, right? Bioinformatics is all about managing the data generated by these sequencing technologies, right? So sequencing has played a very important role. In terms of uh, application milestones, uh, so we have genome sequencing, shotgun sequencing, I mentioned. Express sequence tags are also very, very important, you know. I'm not going into any of the details. 
next generation sequencing for bacterial genome uh, resequencing with next uh, generation sequencing i'll tell you what is uh, ngs and uh, you know so i think these are all companies like pack bio and so on in 2017 human genome de novo assembly with nanopore sequencing people have done that actually you know so now something you sequenced earlier with some other technology and you want to reconfirm you know the, you know the sequencing again with new technology right so that is also done at different level so again i mean this list are even continuing after that i have not included but this is up to 2017 so uh, in a summary uh, what are the major events so 1977 sanger method mitochondrial genomic sequence in 1981 human genome project started in 90s <coughs> complete cell genome in 1995 complete eukaryotic eukaryotic genome 1996 human genome computed in 2001 second generation sequencer 454 gs20 in 2005 second generation sequencer genetic analyzer 2 2007 uh, then human microbiome pro project started in 2008 actually uh, and i mean different stages are there third generation sequencer pack bio that company is making pack bio rs nanopore sequencing is a very very unique discovery as you can see that it's just a pen drive kind of sequencer you know it's very easy and of course as i mentioned uh, in fact you, you can see that in our course the logo that we have given is pen drive kind of sequencing and synthesis device right if all two combined in single thing that will be you know you can use it quite often and then third stage of human microbiome project so now rather than humans so people are also trying to study so what see because we humans carry a lot of bacteria not only every species carry a lot of bacteria it is called it you know what is our microbiome thing you know so there is an ecosystem and we should know what kind of bacteria are friendly with us and sequencing them so that we can understand the relationship of this ecosystem there is a lot of work actually for all of you you know you start sequencing these viruses bacteria all plants you know you can also sequence for example all indian medicinal plants right so many jadi buti and aushadhiyan right uh, from the himalayas so you can get them sequence them i think already government of india is doing a lot of stuff there but there is a lot of opportunity for you now we have the technology you can sequencing is very easy actually you know you can just read it try to understand the data and actually if you want to understand the data it requires a lot of mathematics and computer science to really understand uh, all that stuff you know so as i mentioned sequencing by synthesis approach this is the main approach uh, which has been used uh, in even dna microarray as i explained to you what is dna microarray right so maybe uh, let me in these wait so something like this there is there is a spot At each spot, you attach a known known DNA, right? Known DNA, DNA, and then unknown will attach to it, and you read it, you know, spot by spot, you know. That is uh, mostly in the synthesis approach in DNA microarray. Of course, this design of a spot and other things are different. So, first generation sequencing is known as Sanger sequencing, which was discovered by Sanger. next generation sequencing or it is also known as second generation sequencing is massive parallel approach rather than reading single uh, dna you, know, you do different copies and read it parallelly you know this is a massive parallel approach that has happened and third generation sequencing is real time single molecule like nanopore sequencing is like that you know bit by bit you read the data that is the most powerful technique actually third generation is uh, is very common but of course human genome project was possible because of next generation sequencing a lot you know that is something uh, really very very important so this is a picture of shotgun sequencing there is genotic genomic dna you cut into pieces right and then the sequencer is there which is going to read it and these are the fragments which are read dna sequence reads and then computer using graph theoretical algorithm 
so i think i uh, i will leave it to you just tell me which algorithms are used reconstructing from fragments of dna to actual dna order you know it's very very interesting thing uh, okay so from this assembly of dna sequences uh, reads are there and you whole sequences is reconstructed from there you know so this is something shotgun sequencing so as you can see here uh, to sanger dna sequencing uh, so it's all polymerase based dna sequencing dna sequencing by synthesis to sequence 500 to 700 dna bases per reaction 16 reactions per gel okay so the gel electrophoresis uh, experiment uh, so this is the thing okay so sequence 10000 dna bases per gel you know this is the overall in massive parallel uh, parallel dna sequencing sequence 100 to 5000 dna bases per reaction 10000 to 10 million reactions per slide this is uh, the really revolutionary idea so it can sequence 2 trillion dna bases per slide so it's, it's huge uh, on the other hand this last picture is nanopore sequencing you see these kind of uh, pores are there uh, and actually uh, you know there are these are semiconductor based uh, and uh, you know there are two kind of nanopore sequencing one is biological nanopore another one is semiconductor based you know so both both uh, approaches are popular so here sequence is upwards of 200 dna bases per device you know so you just going there and you are reading one bit by bit basically you see so this signal is cached here so you read the position if it is a c g t so you convert into some sort of signal right so so sequence 10000 to 4 million dna bases per pore 40000 to 250000 pores per device so that kind of thing so you can actually do very fast sequencing so as i mentioned so there are two two versions of it solid state nanopore biological nanopore so i am not going into any more details like how the biological nanopore work we need to look at the chemistry of it or the solid state nanopore but i think you got an idea so, so these are the nanopores in this device right and then reading is done actually so this is the summary of all the techniques first generation sequencing sanger sequencing genomic dna fragmented dna cloning and amplification all the techniques then sequencing and detection and then reading you know okay then second generation sequencing is massive parallel genomic dna fragmented dna adapter ligation amplification and then you reading right okay the detection uh, different cycle wise and third generation is real time single molecule uh, you know which is then a poor kind of thing okay so these are the three things i think another one approach is dna sequencing by mass spectroscopy you know so here mass of a c g t is different so you know you, you somehow read that mass and that will tell you whether it is a c g or t right and that is how you read the whole thing and i have not covered any slides of this but but then we have to go to the mass spectroscopy by the way uh here is a summary of popular uh, you know machines uh, which are available sequencing machines or sequencer illuminia uh, illuminia company uh, is the most uh, uh, basically the third one you know is is the leader actually in this area you know and as you know they are the co-founder of the dna data storage alliance because they are also working on this technology because sequencing they are master and now everybody is trying to look at the road block of dna synthesis okay that is another very very important thing so there are different uh, you know uh, companies like iron torrent uh, 454 life sciences roche genetics irmnia applied biosystems uh, they did the early one the first automated uh, dna sequencer pacific biosciences applied biosciences uh, sanger so basically uh, iron torrent pgm 454 gs flx high sig 2000 uh, solid v4 pack bio sanger thi 730 xl uh, and uh, mgi dnbs eq g400 so different uh, you know 
sequencer machines when there are companies who, which are producing the chemistry is different uh, you know so i think one has to go into these chemistries if you really want to understand how these machines work amplification approach is also different so pcr normally or emission pcr okay and then uh, data output per run that is also an important parameter okay accuracy so each machine is different uh, error rate accuracy and so on time to take in time per run is 2 hours 24 hours 3 to 10 days 7 to 14 days 2 to 4 hours 20 minutes to 3 hours in sanger and 3 to 5 days okay the read length 200 to 400 base pair 700 base pair so now you see that these are the techniques which will tell you when you are reading the data from dna storage technique right so you are limited by the machine choice of the machine so some of you who are implementing the DNA storage pipeline in the DNA cloud software, actually, you know, for them, as I mentioned, uh, in one of the GUIs, you can actually, after converting the, uh, you know, so once you read some DNA, right? So basically, you can develop the software which you are compatible with their uh, different machines, you know, their format of the data, right? Because uh, this is for sequencing, similarly for uh, synthesizer. Okay, there are three main approaches of synthesizer, which we'll talk about later on. So it's very, very important that there should be compatibility there, right? And then there is a cost. And I think cost has reduced a lot, actually, as compared to the Human Genome Project. Now it is probably $1,000 or something. Uh, but, uh, you know, as uh, you know, and this is the cost per instrument. So how costly they are, $80,000, $500,000. Six ninety thousand dollar, four ninety five. You know, it's still very costly, right? So there is an opportunity for you that can you build these machines in India, right? So you need to understand the chemistry and VLSI semiconductor biology, of course. So you can start a company, right? If you produce these machines in India, suddenly it will be a great thing, right? Anyway, so I think. That's all for sequencing. There are different applications of sequencing as DNA storage is one of them, right? So sequencer as counting devices, clinical applications, genome resequencing. So as you know that all the viral diseases sequencing is, is very, very, very popular, right? It's very, very important, I think. Okay. So I think that's all for, I think we have covered few things, still a couple of things are left. So I think first of all, we are going to cover now next DNA synthesis. How do we write? Okay. So that is very, very important. Okay. So that's all. Any questions you have? Sequencing is 